name is Eric Lassie, and I'm here to talk about the new Color Atlas of Hematology, Volume 2. But first, a little about me. I'm a community pathologist in Southern California. I'm a member of Affiliated Pathologist Medical Group, which is a 40 pathologist independent pathology group covering hospitals and laboratories in California, Oregon, and Phoenix. I've been involved with the College of American Pathologists my entire career, and I've chaired a number of committees like the Hematology and Clinical Microscopy Committee, Publications, Digital Pathology, Curriculum, Information Technology Leadership Committee, and recently the Council on Membership and Professional Development. I'm also a past board member of the CAP Foundation and the Board of Governors. I'm also a graduate, a proud graduate of the Engage Leadership Academy, and I am past president of the Digital Pathology Association. I'm also a trustee of the American Board of Pathology. Now, I love photography and graphic design, illustrations, and digital imaging, which brings me to the topic of the CAP Color Atlas series of textbooks, namely volume two of the Color Atlas of Hematology. Like its predecessor, Volume 2 is based on proficiency testing challenges, and while Volume 1 focused on peripheral blood smear, Volume 2 is all about the bone marrow. After an introduction containing sections on bone marrow sampling, marrow environment, smear differentials, and artificial intelligence, the main chapters deal with nucleated red blood cells, granulocytes and monocytes, megakaryocytic cells, blast, lymphocytes, and plasma cells, and miscellaneous bone marrow cells. There's also an appendix talking about PT testing. Each identification has vital statistics, illustrations highlighting pertinent morphologic features, a discussion, and proficiency testing photomicrographs. Sections called A Closer Look At provides a deeper dive into important concepts but there is so much more. Don Karcher wrote the foreword for this volume, and he rightly points out that this book is not just an atlas. Of course, there are plenty of static images, over 900, plus 274 illustrations, 29 tables, and three charts. More importantly, there are 127 virtual bone marrow smear links that can be navigated using the CAP's digital scope whole slide image viewer. These virtual smears provide as close to a real life glass slide and analog microscope experience as possible in keeping with one of the key tenets of proficiency testing. Finally, authors recorded 17 video vignettes of topics that they were passionate about. This supplements the text quite nicely and follows the success of the CAP's virtual lecture series. Morphology is the centerpiece and it is still the foundation for hematology. It provides diagnoses well before sophisticated testing can be performed, such as flow cytometry, cytogenetics, and FISH. But experts can disagree. The Hematology Resource Committee of the CAP, the group that selects proficiency testing challenges, does not always have a consensus for cell identification. Blood cells are dynamic. Morphologic features blend with one another. How do you determine true north? What is the correct answer? The committee has always believed in the power of the laboratory, the collective wisdom of pathologists and technologists. The final answer is built on a crowdsourced response to an unknown cell. That is how proficiency testing is graded. 80% of labs are needed for consensus. There is a section on artificial intelligence in the introduction that envisions a future world where digital pathology coupled with artificial intelligence, transform the practice of hematopathology. This section was written by a good friend, Dr. Mohamed Salama. He predicts that artificial intelligence, or AI, will dramatically change the practice of hematology over the next five to 10 years. Algorithms combined with digital pathology will soon outperform traditional microscopy. Multiple studies using machine learning for diagnosis classification and differentiation of neoplastic hematologic conditions and their precursors have confirmed the utility of AI in the diagnostic workflow. 
This will most likely change how proficiency testing is performed. And if that is the case, I am sure the next edition of this color atlas will have a greatly expanded discussion of hematologic algorithms. Okay, let's take a look at the book. We'll flip through the, a few of the pages here, the table of contents. And here's a listing of 16 videos that the chapter authors have created highlighting areas of interest. Each has a QR code. Use your smart device to scan the code and look at a case. Here's one by Carla Wilson on myelodysplastic syndrome. I'm a hematopathologist and a professor in the Now let's flip through the book and I'll show you a few highlights. There are numerous illustrations, still photographs, charts and tables. As I noted earlier, each cell identification has vital statistics shown by the blue box, an illustration, and a discussion followed by static images. Also, there are QR codes which link to the whole sign image scan of the bone marrow, in this case, a Gaucher cell. Now let's flip through the book and find another interesting whole side image scan. Here's one, an acute leukemia of lymphoid origin that shows hand mirror features. At the end of the book, we've listed all of the proficiency testing whole site image scans of the bone marrow since the program's inception. And that's a wrap. My two fellow editors once again need special recognition, Drs. Catherine Galligan and David Blomberg. Each brings unique skills to this publishing endeavor. They share senior editorship with me and were always available for inspiration. This book never would have been published without their unflagging assistance. I am proud of our contributions to pathology literature. We have now collaborated on five CAP color atlases. We make a really good team. Finally, I want to single out Dr. Patrick Ward, who is one of the world's best morphologists. He has an amazing collection of hematology images, perhaps the largest in the world, and they are all pristinely photographed. Each is a work of art. He generously shared his photomicrographs with us. In closing, I hope this atlas serves you well, both as a resource, but also inspiration. It is what I envision as the future of textbooks, a mix of static and virtual images that provide a rich collective experience. Let me know if you enjoyed it and how we can make it better. Thank you. Thank you.